through consciousness development, you start to become aware of different layers in reality. You can access wisdom. Confront the unknown courageously. Speak truth. Have enough integrity so that you can break the rules when it's necessary in the service of a higher good. To know that is to be human. You need to be extremely passionate about what you do. And if you're passionate about what you do, then this will infect others. A lot of people are slaves of their fears and their patterns, but it's very important that you are free and authentic. If you have the ability to empty your mind and perceive, mm. then you can see. Actually, it's inside out. Start with yourself and then you will be more capable of, of looking at the outside world. We have to really slow down and ask ourselves what we're doing here and what, what responsibility we carry for future generations. I am Joel Hanegoor and this is the Awake Origins podcast. Here to break down the misconceptions about success and happiness. Bringing you inspiration from awake leaders, entrepreneurs and creators to empower you to create your life from the inside out. Sieger Schulte, it's mm -hmm. great to have you on the podcast. Thank you yes. for being here. We've met, I think it was at the beginning of this year, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Well, we had some uh, special moments uh, together in between uh, that moment and right now. Mm. What I love about you is, um, of course, you're an entrepreneur. It, uh, you're a change maker, the way I look at you. I love your presence and, and your playful nature. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can really see when you look at your eye with that smile of yours. <laughs> so I'm, I've... I've been looking forward to this conversation, just to see where it will, what will happen, where it will, uh, where it will go. But thank you for taking your time to be here. Yeah, of course. What, what I'm, um, I, th I think you're, how old are you, 27, 28? 27. 27. Mm. So you're, well, there's more than a decade in age difference between the two of us. So f for me, you're almost like a new generation. Mm. And, um, well, when I look at myself, it's and I look at my awakening process. It was kind of an abrupt thing that happened. And but when I look at you, you're more like the, the natural, from my perspective, who, who has always been in uh, in that knowing. I, I'm not sure if that's true, but that's the way it feels. So what I'm what I want to start out with is: Can you describe how your uh, awakening process went? What, what what was the journey for you? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm. Yeah, it, it was a longer. I, I, it's great that you see me as this. Like, it's come from a knowing. I think a little bit, but like, it, it's definitely been a like uh, up and down, and also a, a real not knowing a lot. Um, but yeah, I think it started. I or it really started for me when I was sixteen. Um, I was. I don't know, I remember this piece of information coming into my life where I was like, I'm gonna die and my parents are gonna die uh, and everyone I love is gonna die. And that just like, it was just a piece of information that came into my mind and I was like... Like a thought? Like, yeah, like a thought. It was just like, it was a realization. It was like, okay, I'm gonna die and my parents are gonna die. And then... So I, can you, where was this? Were you at school or something? No, what I, 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 think, I, I think I was at home. Like it was like in the evening, like I was going to bed and I, I suddenly this piece of information came to me or I just realized it and it was like, oh my God, it's so true. Like I'm gonna die and everyone's someday. gonna- Someday. Yeah, 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 someday. I didn't think I was gonna die right that moment, but it was just like this really clear, what? And I just didn't know how to deal with it. So it was really like, a, I, I ended up like crying in my bed I, for multiple days at end. Because you felt so intense. Because I felt so, I felt so like this is a realization, and I don't know what to do with it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't give it like a a place, you know. And I think at that in that time, and for a, I think a, quite a long time in my kind of process, um, I've really tried to conceptualize it. Always, I've always tried to. So I think at that moment in time, I was really like. I was really trying to conceptualize it and I, didn't, I just didn't know what to do with it. So I remember just being a few days like crying in bed. And then one day my dad randomly asked me 
hey, do you want to go to this Buddhist meeting as, as he was leaving the house, like, like really last moment. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Your dad. Yeah, my dad, um, who has nothing with spirituality at all. Like a, a, a friend of his asked to, to come along once. And so <laughs> then I went together with him and then we went down like into the city center and these Buddhist and meetings. This are, was in Amsterdam? This was in Budapest. Budapest. Yeah. Um, and these Buddhist meetings are always held in these like little living rooms. So we entered this living room. We're already 15 minutes late and there's a group of 20 people sitting there chanting to a thing like nam myo ring yo, nam myo ring yo. And as like as a first time coming in there, it was, you know, it felt very weird. It felt like you just joined in the back and you don't even know the words. So you're just there like and you can't like it's so hard to hear the words when a group of people are chanting. But so it was quite a bizarre experience. Um, but then at the end, like that very meeting, after the chanting, they always had like half an hour of chanting and then an hour of talking about philosophy and, and life. And that very time they talked about death as their topic. You're kidding. So like suddenly it was for me like, oh my God, someone is talking about this because I, I hadn't found answers and it was not an easy like conversation starter at school either. So. <laughs> I was like, I was finally, and I was together with this group of, you know, 20 people who are all above 50, some near their death, talking about death. And then, you know, partly using the Buddhist lens, but also using their experiences. And, that, and then after that meeting, my dad never went back and I went every single week. Mm. I went and I started chanting and meditating and yeah, and that's kind of, and that I did that for for four or five years. Uh, you, you were living in Budapest back then? Yeah, so between when I was 10 and 18, I lived in Budapest and then I moved to Delft. And then in, when I was in Delft as well, I kept my Buddhist traditions, hmm. which is like created hilarious scenarios of me, you know, chanting while like student flatmates of mine were like drinking beers next to me and then me just trying to like dedicate myself <laughs> to my practice. But after a while they, they, they accepted it and understood it, but... So, so what happened with, with that first thing about death? What, what did, did the meeting help or what happened in the weeks mm. that followed? Yeah, I think... I mean, uh, this question of death, I think, has been quite a center point in my whole journey. So it's still like... It's still a question that informs me today. Um, and it's still something that inspires me a lot today. I, I think it, it's started losing the morbid feeling behind it. And now is like, and like informing me more about what does aliveness feel like and how, how, do, how do you feel really truly alive, you know? So it's like a more of an informant. And I think at that time, I think for a very long period, I kind of conceptualized it. I was like, oh, but if you do this and this, then death is okay or something. Or, you know, like I, I definitely, from when I was 16, spent multitude of years building this huge, like spiritual framework under which I felt like, oh, okay, but if you live life in this way and this way and this way, and you do this and this and this, then, okay, then it makes sense. And then the universe makes sense. And then the world makes sense. And I think just quite recently, I've gotten more into this place where it's like, okay, the whole framework is also just framework I've mm. created and more trusting into the not knowing and into just the feeling of it and sensing and, and the real like direct experience and from there just feeling like oh I can live my truth from that without it having to have this huge conceptual framework that every time a new idea comes in I have to Needs force to it into the framework it costs so much energy like yeah, yeah, yeah. I've <laughs> realized how much energy I spent in the last I'm probably 10 years trying to like force things into my framework that was like really like this huge castle yeah so so what is the the what is spirituality for you now if you would give it words mm. what is the what is the journey about mm. i know it's still words and it's mm. uh, st still frameworking stuff but yeah Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's kind of a, 
living as a form or living as a human um, from a deeper place almost of unknowing but like of, of, of an em embrace of unknowing so it's more like uh, accepting accepting kind of the accepting the, the non-knowing and really just stepping fully into kind of this human very form experience but with a connection to to something greater that just helps helps inform actions or you know it's i don't know mm. it's like so difficult to describe it's it's really transformed into a feeling which has transformed into aliveness and direction and a feeling of like i don't know of, of flowing as well uh yeah it's very hard so, to describe. So, so what does this mean? How, how do you do this? That living from a place of that connection. How do you cultivate that connection? Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. I, well, I, I think I, for the last 10 years, it's really meditation has really been central in it. Uh, meditation just every day, sitting in the morning and sitting down and just looking at what would come up and looking at your thoughts and looking at the emotions and and therefore just yeah i guess building awareness around everything that's going on and all your ideas and all your constructs and all everything that that happens at any moment so i i would definitely say meditation has been this center point as a practice um in terms of cultivating that and then i i feel also just a kind of a vulnerability to direct experience or a certain openness to direct experience that's really as of late or as of like the last two years really informing my spiritual path it's really just going through the direct experience and then being fully there with the emotions and energies that are there and what do you mean then with direct experience what what is that mm. yeah it's um I guess it's kind of like seeing your whole life as a meditative practice where you want to be completely there at the moment something is happening and be completely there with the emotion and energy and thoughts that are happening and, and kind of stay in that almost seat of awareness, almost as like third person perspective without being detached with it, but having this third person and just being fully there with that what you're experiencing this very moment and that seeing that what you're experiencing this very moment is exactly what you need to learn in that very moment is exactly what you need to be with exactly what you need to surrender to and in that way kind of you know informing my growth path informing like oh what's really present in me or oh, what's really causing resistance or oh, what's really making me sad or oh, what's really making me happy and then and and fully being with that uh, and through that direct experience of just embracing yeah the direct experience whatever it is right in front of you if it's making a cup of tea or being hit by a train um to be with it even though that yeah will be very hard with it yes yeah, so how do you do it i have to think about the you know, maybe you know the fight club scene in which uh, <laughs> brad pitt uh, throws uh, i think it's acid, acid or something yeah. on the hands of edward norton and he says yeah. okay stay with stay with it <laughs> And of course, you want to go away with your mind. You want to leave that place yeah. of pain and suffering. Yeah. So how do you do that? How do you stay with also the, the, the negative emotions or the mm. negative things that are happening? Negative. Yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't know. Like continue, I think continuously, continuously getting better at it. I think there's still like negative emotions that I run away from, like, and we talked about this earlier as well, like loneliness is definitely like a, like a negative feeling that, I, that comes up in me that I can still be like, nope, not facing this, I'm gonna meet some people now. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think, uh, or at least what really helps me is just this feeling, I, it's partly a reframing, like it's partly a, oh, negative emotions are the, are the most incredible like diamonds and gems of, of your life and and kind of holding that really far in the back of your mind and just knowing oh this this is 
apparently something that ha is a, has a deep opportunity and is a deep learning and is another gateway to me opening up m my highest potential. Um, can you, can, for our listeners, can you explain why those negative things are the diamonds? I think often because they're, they're the blockades that are still holding you back from you just expressing yourself fully or they're, they're the, I mean, they're on one side, the learning, the learning blocks of you understanding what structures you have on your mind or what things, what emotions you're still holding on to from past traumas or from past things. So it's kind of like, it's informing you in, Hey, what's, what's there, what's still resisting you? What's still holding you back? Uh, what do you still need to learn? And so by really looking at them and being with them, it's like, it's, uh, I guess, yeah, going through them mm. and through that slowly letting go of these resistances of, of past emotions, of hopes for the future or really like, you know, like really strong ideas that actually kept you boxed in, kept you structured, kept you in limits because you didn't want to touch it because it hurts. But if you're able to be with it and, and move through it, it expands and it opens up and and through that I think your potential as a human expands because you don't have to come into a situation and get triggered and therefore shut down and not be able to deal with the situation but you can continuously better move into a situation and at that moment in time feel okay I can I can feel into the situation and from a place of clarity I can move with the situation and, and do something with the situation which then my hope is you can take better informed decisions and mm. help the evolution of mankind and the planet and help people and, and do good and come from a place of love. Uh, mm. Yeah. What, <clears throat> thank you for sharing that. Mm. The way I interpret it, the way you talked about the spiritual journey is on the one hand side you have that connection and mm. cultivating that connection and the other hand side you have the which for you is the meditation and the direct experience. And on the other hand side, you have the experience of being a human being. And mm. then it's, you'd also talk about yeah. creation. Mm. So what, what does that look like when you do that from that place of connection? How do you go through life then? And what does this mean for your creational process? <sighs> yeah. It's a really good question that I've been asking myself, I think, a lot as well. Uh, and which I think this year uh, what the process for me has been in that creation is more process of surrender to kind of saying okay show, show, me, what, show me what I need to do um, and so for that, it's, it's been really trying to let go. I, I, what I really like is kind of this like open mind, open heart, and then open will. And I really got it in my head, like the beginning of this year is like, okay, the last thing I really want to open up to is, is my will, because there's always this, like, you know, there's a, all these underlying reasons that you want to get to things, but what, what if you can, what if you can open up you know, everyone knows how to, op I think a lot of people know how to open their mind or their heart, but it's like, when can you open up to your will to say, I don't need to do one specific thing or not, I don't have to create this or do this. And I know I felt like it was really important for me to go through that kind of processing process of saying, okay, I'm going to start from a complete place of openness and then from there start getting informed. And I think then I don't know what what I'm currently in is this, this very intuitive process uh, where I kind of follow the energy. I just feel oh, this feels very good. This is going well, and it just I don't know. It's like a, it doesn't. It almost doesn't even have a very direct. This is exactly where I need to go, or this is like it. It has much more of kind of a like everyday flowing sensation of okay, this feels really good. Okay, let's go do this. Okay more of this and then I don't know and but also like just very beautiful kind of synchronistic moments of people coming to me and just saying hey th let's do this or let's build this or let's 
create this. And yeah, I don't know, it's, I find it quite hard to like mm. put concrete words to it. Like it's like, uh, because right now it's such a flow that's kind of just going and feels very right. Like it feels very beautiful for me. And like, so I guess, yeah, I, I think the best way I, I would describe it is kind of once again, using di your direct experience to inform you and from a place of clarity, like let your direct experience form you of, okay, this, this is how I'm going to do things. And these things, you know, feel good from like a intuitive sense, not purely from kind of like a desire or preference sense, but really from a, this feels good. So you follow what feels good. That is your new will, so to yeah, say. Yeah, it's, uh, I follow the energy. So it's not like purely it feels good. Sometimes there's a lot of energy on something that feels really bad, but you feel like, or what would be determined as negative or something, but you feel there's energy there and this needs to be said. You know, or you have a difficult conversation and you feel this needs to be said, but you, everything inside you says, don't say this, don't say this, don't say this. But there's so much energy there. It just feels like, yeah, you need to speak your truth at this very moment in time. So it's not like, purely like looking for ecstasy experiences, but it's really following, I don't know, following your own truth, following your own intuition, following your own energy of. And how would you describe that feeling of that experience of energy? What do you feel then? Yeah. I mean, I, I mostly feel a lot kind of around my heart and here in my lower stomach. Um, I think I've developed a lot of awareness around these areas. So I, I, I don't know, I just feel like a tingling sensation or a buzzing sensation or kind of a, like an opening of my heart or like, a, like it, it, it comes from really like d deep down here often. Like it's really like, a, and I don't know. I think often what describes it as well is kind of a lightness. Like it feels like, like, it, like you, you're feeling enlightened or you're feeling like you're feeling a certain lightness with it you're feeling ah oh, yes like it's like a, oh and there's this a uh, passion and motivation but i definitely still like for myself i'm definitely still sometimes because i've come out of a business of three years where i really wanted to do well you know but like when i look back at it i see that some of my intrinsic motivations were really like success and showing the world that it w I would be successful. And, and I think that's left kind of this like pain in me that I really feel like, oh, I don't want to be doing it from that place anymore. Like I don't want to uh, chase success or money because I've seen I've negatively impacted people because of it, even in mm. this, just in the slightest sense, in the slightest decision making. So I think I'm definitely still in a process of like questioning when is this from like a really intrinsic motivation or when is this actually a motivation because I feel like I'm not enough or there's a lack, there's a feeling of I'm not enough. Uh, I need to prove to someone, I need to have more friends. I need to do this and this and this, and therefore I need to, you know, I'm going to organize this event. And that causes a lot of energy in me as well. So I'm still dissecting like, when is this energy coming from, you know, a place of abundance or a place of, okay, I feel clear and I feel good. And this is really what needs to be created to I'm creating something from actually a motivation that I am not even aware about, mm -hmm. uh, that has, you know, created a pattern in my life by which I get fulfillment or fill up this lack through certain activity. Um, and so I'm still really in the dissecting process. I don't know. It's so I'm, hard. It's so <laughs> hard. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. What, what is, what is your, like, do you have, do you have a very clear, like, like split way where you feel like, oh, this is really when I know I'm tuned in. And this is when I know this is from like another intrinsic motivation or a past like pattern that's playing up. And I think for me, it's most of the time more of a physical experience. Like I can sense when I'm going more into my head. So it's not that I'm more in a thinking mode, but I'm more of my awareness mm. is here. And then, then for me, it feels like, no, that this, mm. it, this cannot be right. And this, 
this is kind of a wave pattern. So sometimes there are days or sometimes even weeks that I realize, oh fuck, yeah, I'm, I've been living in this space more than in, in this space in which like you ex explained, it's, it feels lighter and then there, there's just the knowing and, and the flow. I realized yesterday, I, 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 I did, this weekend I said, okay, uh, increase my meditation time because I've, looking back on the last couple of weeks, I, I feel like but it, it, was, it was a more superficial life than I'm used to in the last year or years. Like I've been here more and, and now I sense, ah, okay, I'm, I'm going back to, to the center of it. And then I feel that my decision making changes as well. Mm. But still, um, I think when you've done some groundwork, and I, I think I've, I've been doing some groundwork in the last few years, then there's still some basis of knowing decision making. Mm. So also in the last few weeks, I do feel that my intuition was not gone. It was mm. still alive and I could mm -hmm. still, I could still, it still felt right when it comes to the major decisions. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I know I can do far better yeah. uh, when I have my uh, circumstances right. Mm. Yeah. I, I, what, what, what the thought you triggered in me now as well is like, I guess it's also a continuous learning of better being able to differentiate that. You know, m maybe at this moment in time, like you're, you're better at able to see, oh, I've really come to my mind. So I, almost that is a practice in itself as well to mm. inform your practice, which yeah. is like, a, oh, that I've apparently really gotten stuck in my head. Yeah. I have that when you, I don't know if you have this experience, but for a few days, I didn't do my daily practice that much. And it's like agony, like it's almost like I'm getting a headache and everything starts to feel, uh, feel shitty. Mm. Like, and then I think, well, but this is not how I felt 10 years ago when I didn't do this, this is not the normal state of any other person. But why is it like it's backfiring so hard then? Yeah. Do you know why that is? Yeah, I, I don't know why that is, but I definitely, I can see myself in it. I think, I think what, what is also like, what, what I experience in that is like, I think you're just more aware of how big the difference is. You know, like it's more like, you, you feel an awareness of, oh, it, I can be living in this state, which is like very aligned and, and, and alive. And then you feel like you're completely on the other spectrum where I feel like hurried and I feel like, uh, like the world is too much and it's overwhelming. And it's like, there's all these negative and fear driven decisions. Like, but I think, but then you, you're still aware of it. So you have that grounding and you're still seeing that and you're like, oh my God, that is like, I guess far from me living my truth or far from me like living in my completed life stage or from like a place of clarity. So it's like, I think it's an awareness as well of like how, how big the difference is. Mm. Like, and I'm already starting to notice it now in like conversations, you know, like I'll have one conversation and, and I'll, I'll some, like my energy level will drop or like something, something is triggered in me and right away I'm like, ooh. I like I can notice myself it just in one conversation like dropping dropping down and apparently then there is something I need to work on or there's something I still need to work with to like surrender to that moment or that conversation or the difference in opinion in whatever there is but yeah it's so like it's so noticeable now that it's like painful to be through the process and you're yeah, like yeah. oh <laughs> and you know you know like like you almost feel like, oh, I was just there and now I'm here and I want to be there. And then you have to let that go again. Like it's like a, it's, it's almost annoying. <laughs> it's like, but still worth it. But still worth it. It's worth it endlessly because I, I feel endlessly you're breaking through. Like, and you're always like able to handle more responsibility, able to open up further to your potential, able to feel more love and, and openness and connectedness. And so every time it's, it's worth it. And I think over time, it develops more of an unconditionality to it, you know? So it's like, also when you feel really down, there's still some unconditionality of, there's still some wave of love underneath it and still some wave of acceptance and still some like, you know? So 
there's the holding space becomes more unconditional mm. over time. Mm. Mm. Okay, can you tap into what the, what the next level for yourself is in this process? I'm playing. I'm playing with with a thought right now, which I was strengthened by by a book yesterday called Unfettered Soul. Um, playing with this thought of like devoting yourself to unconditional happiness or like devoting yourself to like complete aliveness uh, and playing with this idea of like is it really like is it really not just a choice at the end of the day like can can I can I make the choice to live joyously even in my most down moments hmm. like can I make the choice to live lightly even in the, the most overwhelming of times uh, can I, you know, can, can I consciously dedicate myself to that and make that choice fully to actually have that vibrating sense of aliveness always there, even in the, in, in kind of what you would see as the most negative of times or the darkest of times. And is there, can I like deeply on a like deep resounding level, like say yes, you know, like say yes to the whole of it and and be with it kind of joyously. Like, it, I don't know, I'm, I'm really playing with the idea. And the last few days I've been in that state. So like, no, I have a feeling, of, <laughs> oh yeah, it's possible. <laughs> but then like, but right, last few days, nothing has hit, like come on my doorstep and just slap me in my face. So it's been, yeah, it it's been to be fine tested. to feel that the last few days, but like, it's a, it's a question. And how, how does that work for you generally? Like now you're playing around with the question and uh, you experience that you're there, but then is then at a certain point in time you make the choice consciously, like, okay, I'm going all in on feeling that level of joy all the time, or is it just happening? Hmm. I think, I think it's just happening, but you're, but you're making the choice as well but it's just happening. But I think you're also, you're learning through direct experience that it is possible, you mm -hmm. know? Like, so- You have some feedback loops, which You have some you. feedback loops and they become stronger and you get tested even harder. And then you, then you overcome the test and you grow in resilience and you're like, yes, like I can fully be with that. Or I, oh, and you know, and I think I think if you're able to stay in that, this is an opportunity, I guess, mindset or like feeling or like feeling of potential, then any test can be another test to, to grow your conviction almost, or to grow your feeling of, yes, this, like, I can live completely joyous. Like I can live joyously even with negativity. I can feel lightness even with the most existential dread that I experience and it's allowed to be there because I'm here like and I'm here anyway and I'm here anyway in this human form so I might as fucking well like I might as well just I might as well see how what I can how I can make the best out of it and like you know create beautiful things and like experience life joyously in between this time of birth and death that is guaranteed to all of us you know mm. it's like we're all we're all guaranteed this birth and death cycle and this time in between how did you so you explained when you were 16 that you went mm. to this um, gathering and things started to change for you yeah when you look at this from a social perspective, you, you mentioned that your, your friends were drinking beer and you were doing the chanting. Mm. But did you encounter like-minded people right, right away that were of your own age? And how, how, did, how did it go the years after until now? Mm. No, I didn't at the beginning encounter like-minded people of my own age. Um, so at the start, it was really like, I befriended like-minded people of like 50 years old. Um, and then over time, I think at, at university as well, I met people who, who really had 
like who are really stepping into the same kind of open perceptiveness of just wanting to discover the world and like learn about its concepts and just this continuous openness. And I think those people I've together just been on a journey with and every time a new layer has kind of unfolded. Uh, so it's, it's quite nice, I think, that because this process has been quite gradual for me, it hasn't been like a very like renouncement, you know? It hasn't been like, a, oh, I'm renouncing my old world and my old friends and... No, it's been quite like a, my world around me has kind of like moved with me and kind of been like, okay, Zeker's in this process, okay, some of the things he's doing is really weird. And then, you know, and, but then sometimes being like, oh, that's actually really interesting. Uh, let me come along with that part. And then, so it's kind of been like, I don't know, it feels like it's been integrated uh, quite nice. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I've always, I think, been searching for like a community and I still have, a, I, I guess, a still like a, a dream or a need for like a community. Like I've always had this idea of living with a group of, I don't know, 10 or 15 people like in Bali or here or like and in a house together, but where there's a group of people who are really, really open in discovering their potential and together we go on that path and we put in practices and we help each other and we remind each other and we, you know, we strengthen each other every day because, you know, sometimes you go to events and you can feel that energy and you, or you can be together with those friends and you feel, you feel the upliftment and the energy that comes from that and you feel the collective the kind of vortex that you're together growing and then you get pu pulled out of the events and you get put into everyday life which is also the best best of challenges but it's just like there's still mm. cur curiosity like can you surround yourself with that group of people that there's just a like a really strong growing vortex and really like the boundaries of what like what seems limited first like start like disappearing at like a rapid rate and like an increasing rate like i'm i'm still wondering if you're able to step into that energy with a group of people and and really keep feeding each other and keep looking yeah. at whatever is inside of you and go like i feel like there's some like something crazy could happen and why is it not there yet that community around you yeah i don't know i think i think as like i think I have the friend groups and the people around me that, that, that support this kind of, you know, feeling, mm. but it hasn't yet manifested into like a house where it's like a full-time commitment to yeah, like yeah, yeah. endless potential, <laughs> you know? And I don't know, like, I think it just, it's not supposed to be there yet. Like, I think it will come, but I, I, I also don't feel like a strong need of like, I need to force it or it needs to be there, but I feel like it will come if it needs to be there. It, it, it will be created. Um. That's what I love about you, how seamlessly, easily that is for you to just say, okay, <clears throat> let's see what happens and what life will bring me. Mm -hmm. Like in the, in the beginning of this year, you shared, when we met for the first time, you, you shared that you were, um, well, you're going out of your company. I think you're still a shareholder, but mm -hmm. not running it anymore. And you said, okay, this year, um, I don't know which word you used, but it's about giving space and uh, being in the present moment mm. and just see what's going to unfold. Like, okay, that's so extraordinary that you can create for yourself this space and then have the trust to, and not the eagerness to start wanting something like you're describing <laughs> yeah. it just now. Um, but it seems to be a natural talent of yours to just, it's almost like a game. Yeah. How does it feel to you? Yeah, it feels it feels like there's definitely some naturally to it and like some of it comes beautifully. But like, I think since we had that first conversation, there was definitely a moment in time that I went <laughs> like, I, I was really like, I was trying to open up. I was like, take on no project, take on nothing. Just let it go. Like really, like I was really like, I want to let go everything. Like I want to like really let go and not have any willingness or any feeling of having to do anything. And there was definitely a moment that I like, I felt like I touched depression. Like I, I and like, there's like two moments that I felt like I 
have n I feel no reason for existence and I also don't feel positive about what hmm. what might emerge you know and that, that I was really like in like and how was it for you it was quite it was quite painful like I remember it's just like a really deep existential dread like I remember laying in my bed and just looking around and just being like this is all made up and I don't even know why I'm here and like this is so confusing and the world is in a in a mess and people are hating each other and like really like taking these big worldly events that were happening and like making them myself making them putting them into myself and then yeah I don't know you know and then also you get this feeling of like I realized I personalized like big events so that I didn't have to face myself. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I actually just felt really crap or I just didn't have, you know, much direction, which was what exactly what I was looking for. But the feeling of like dread or pain that was within me, I was projecting out into the world and being like, oh, the whole world is like, it's fucked and like Corona and like wars and this and people hating and polarization and politics. And, and so I was making it like, I was making like nothing could be done about it as well. You know, like when, when you feel that there's an internal pain inside of you, that's so big, it's a very easy step to start judging things outside mm. of you or, or putting it on things outside of you. And I often then take the world, which then also makes it really like, and like, and you can't start on the task of yeah. like saving the whole world. Right. So then you just end up feeling really existential and really crappy and really like mm. kind of like, mm. like hopeless. So you like from your own dread, you take on this big thing. And it was, it was also a beautiful process of realizing that. And I'm, because I'm, I come huge, like I've studied in, in Delft. I come from this very like very conceptual framework you know i'm like i like really like analytic analyzing things and then conceptual frameworking it and so i like what happens really fast with me is like i experience something and then i throw it on world scale like i'm like oh so this is how the world works da -da -da -da, conceptual framework doo -doo 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 -doo. like and i build all these blocks and so it's also since that deep feeling of kind of almost like a touching a depression is like understanding as well that I, I I no longer have to take these world things and make them my own and they're more just a reflection of what my internal state is like mm. and, and if I and if I feel in a loving and light internal state then the world is a beautiful place and we're going in a beautiful direction you know so it's also that's been I think a really big learning this year is really not taking things outside of me and especially not the world at large for the reason of my like feeling of dread or feeling hmm. of sadness or so so how did you get out of that darker state mm. at first <laughs> at first I, I i think i just uh well the really the thing what that helps me always is just talking about it so i think what helped me at that moment in time was just like vocalizing like really how I felt and really just saying to someone like I feel really crap like I really don't feel like I feel very existential I feel this this and this and then and thereby you acknowledged it truly acknowledge it for yourself as yeah well. yeah and then you get a mirror from outside as well who's who helps you recognize kind of your blind spots or like your cognitive like conceptualization frameworks that you've used to come to that conclusion of however the world works you know and so then i was getting mirrored from the outside of like okay you're taking on world issues and and making them yourself and that then helped me be like okay yeah i am doing that and that helped me to actually be with this pain uh and just let it be my own thing which made it much more tangible and made it more like oh, okay okay just have to relax into it be with it surrender into it and give it some space and then I think slowly as well, I was, I was starting to take on, you know, little activities and little projects as well. I was just like, okay, good. I've, I've, I've touched something and I've, I've given it some space and I've been with it. And now I can 
it's kind of like you know like a dark night of the soul like you have to like you have to go through it and be with it and then slowly i created more space for creation as well and taking on things and it was also a realization of i was forcing myself like to go as deep as possible so it was also kind of like a, a feeling of okay actually it's allowed to be balanced and i'm allowed to like learn and 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 live and kind of it's allowed to be in balance like i'm allowed to learn as well from just you know practical experience i don't have to throw myself into complete like seclusion or like doing nothing. complete meditation and doing nothing to learn life or learn what is really there but it was just such a strong conviction of i don't want to make the same mistakes i don't want to do wrong to other people i don't want to do the wrong thing and i got into this really deep like feeling of i don't know the truth like i don't i don't know I don't know what's true anymore. And when you don't know what's true, then what is good or bad? And so mm. what is good informed decision? What is actually doing good for people? And I just, you know, I also lost myself completely in that existential loophole of like, what is good or bad? And if I really want to do good, what, what is good? Like, that was also like whew, part of that. So what is now then giving you the answers to what is good? Mm. Is it just again following follow the energy? Yeah. Without having a, a conviction about it? Mm. I think it's it's this like it's this like resounding yes idea that it's um I think what really helped me was kind of like a non duality as well or like the feeling of like something I am completely Zeger and I'm completely not Zeger. Like I'm, I am, the world is solved as it is and the world is completely unresolved as it is. Like feeling like, oh, two complete opposing opposites can be there at the same time. And so therefore on a conceptual level there, like there is no c truth or like we don't hold some kind of, you know, like absolute truth, but everything is allowed to be there and like two things that seem truly opposing completely opposing um can both exist at the same time uh um, so from conceptual level that really <laughs> that really helped me because that was really like oh, okay completely opposing things can sit so then the only thing that remains is for me to say complete yes to that what is in front of me and mm. say complete yes to I love the color black and I love the color or the color white is my favorite color and the color black is my favorite color and both is yes both, <laughs> both completely <laughs> right. and, and this I think that kind of yes helped me more than tap into and make it really a body more of a like body thing where it's really like oh this is what feels good for me and that then coming back to the energy and really feeling like oh yeah and you know knowing like the intention and the energy is set there to do good and i know when i'm coming from a like a clear place and coming from a place of love that the intention there is always good and you know something that i do might trigger a person or make a person feel bad or or do something in the world but that that's okay as well um yeah it's okay it's part of life it's part of life and it's also part of our collective learning process like you know it's like there's there's some if i trigger you and and you're able to, to take that as your own thing and then learn from it it's it's like a beautiful it's like we collectively need to learn from the things that we that we do with each other so it's also not a bad thing like if you, you trigger if if my intention was there to be loving and I take the time to really consider my own decisions and and follow my own energy then my hope is to give other people that energy and and, and make them feel loved um, but even if, sometimes when you try and love someone really well they get triggered by that you know like it's and 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 I guess that's okay that's part of it and how is it for you to, um, well, in the last few years you've built a, suc a successful business mm. <clears throat> and then you've been doing nothing for a while and I, I believe now you're having, well, you, you feel where the energy is going and you're 
participating in several projects or things that are going on. Yeah. How is it to not be focused on that one business, but mm. just go with the flow? Because I think in essence, you are someone who wants to manifest something, you want yeah. to create, you are the entrepreneur. Yeah. How, what, is, what is that difference for you and what, where do you mm. see it going in the long run? Mm. Yeah, it feels really good, to be honest, um, because right now it feels very light. Like it doesn't, you know, like I think when you have a business really quickly, you can kind of build this whole conceptual framework around it of, oh, it needs to be like this and it needs to be like this and it has to happen this and needs to be professional and the website needs to be nice and this and this and this. And then you put all the, like this load of expectations that you either get from yourself or from cultural background or from your parents on like what a, what a business needs to be or like a successful or fully functioning business. So it's really nice to kind of not step fully into this definition of, oh, this needs to be a business or it, I, you know, I need to be the co-founder of this or it needs to be like, it's quite nice as well to like work on projects where Breathe is, is, is really becoming like the main like project and driving force. But it's really nice to step into it lightly and kind of, um, it feels like a lot more is allowed to shift and shape as it wants. You know, it's not like hmm. I have this idea and I need to force it in this direction and it needs to be like this. It can be more like, oh, okay, I play this certain role here right now and that's beautiful, but it's also okay if that comes to an end and then I play this role here and that something gets created. And it's also okay if it comes to an end or if I'm not most serving anymore to that or that role and kind of, I don't know that, yeah, I guess that releasing a little bit of, of, of your ego, of your idea of this is success and this is what you should be doing. And this is how you should be like, this is what a business should look like creates much more yeah, openness to what really needs to be there and mm -hmm. what is your like greatest offering to it. Like, how you can best give yourself to what is what is there. Uh, so I've really, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it at this present moment. Uh, and I want to, like, I have an intention to really keep holding that lightness, you know, even if I'm like, I commit myself full time to breathe, uh, to keep holding that lightness of, oh, it may be there and it may not be there. And, I may fulfill a role really well and maybe at a certain point not and you know like that it can mm. just it can f in, it can take the form that it needs uh rather than the form that i i project onto it mm. i don't so, know how, how does that feel for you in terms of awake origins like what what process are you in right now in terms of how, how you shape a business or how you look at what a business should be or conceptualize it or like, and also that dynamic between vision and being in this moment. I think, um, I think I tend to have a um, feeling over things are going in the long, in the long run, which then my mind is also playing a role in it. Like it's says, okay, we're going to be present in uh, over 100 countries in uh, five to 10 years from now, et cetera, et cetera, which I think is okay. Like it, and it makes the vision more concrete mm. and it might not be totally right, but um, it helps to give that sense of direction. And I do, I really try to sense in the moment what the next thing is that wants to happen uh, but I, I do have a major pitfall is, and that is that I um, enjoy doing many things at the same time mm -hmm. so then then it feels right probably more on the, the ego level just to enjoy the process of creation so for example well we, we have origins you have to world consciousness forum and there is resonance, which is more about music and nature and uh, meditational practices. And, I, and, and all of these are very different for me. And in the end, they are all about the same essence. It's mm -hmm. about raising the level of, of consciousness, of awareness. Um, 
but I do enjoy them a lot. And once in a while for me, I hit my head like boom. Okay, something is not working or it's too much or um, what do I need to get out of my agenda at this point in mm -hmm. time? So I do think I've all of the time I've got a sense of where things are going, um, but I want to go too fast. Mm. That's, that's a big problem that I keep running into. And then at once in a while, boom, there's a knowing again, okay, this is the focus for the next mm. three months or maybe even a year and let the rest um, just go for now or maybe on a very low, mm. low level. But I don't think, well, the, o the total openness that you can have, I think I can have more of it. I, <laughs> like uh, getting out of my mind made projections of where I want to go and just and, and I do sense in the moment but I think I can do it more mm. but f for me it remains the question always is okay but you do if you set your energy on where things can be going in the long run the universe will help to create it if it's coming from a place of presence and that dynamic when it comes to okay what setting the energy and the intention and at the same time keep feeling in the present moment that's that's it keeps being an interesting process mm. for me and sometimes it's more over there sometimes here and then it, i'm hitting my head again yeah um yeah i can find that very difficult yeah it is yeah the, the setting of like something ta even tangible i mean what you just said was like setting the energy for the future and the energy for now, which makes me think of, oh, they can be the same, right? Like you have like an intention or an energy that is the future, but that you hold now and therefore is, is created in the future. And if it's only an energy or if it's only like an intention, then I guess it doesn't have very specific forms. It's like manifesting that energy into creation in whatever form that fits best to that energy, mm. which could be love or like whatever, you know? Um, but yeah, for me, it's also hard when you're really like concretely like saying, okay, this is going to be a business and yeah, we want to expand to this and this and this country and do this and this and this, like it comes very hard to see, you know, how much should I let go? How much should I set a vision? Because it's, it can be very powerful to be like, this yeah. is where we're going. Mm. This is where we're practically how it's going to be created. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing with. I think I, I used to feel like, okay, always let your excitement decide. And um, so if I feel very excited about something, that's the way to go. But then I don't do my homework really well. Like what, mm -hmm. I don't, what doesn't give me energy is taking care of the whole back office, having all the processes in place, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a, a recent thing that, um, that I've learned, okay, try to make that into a medita meditative process, like mm. be with it, do what is needed. It mm. might be not, not the most exciting thing, um, but remain in the present moment while mm. you're doing it and then it's totally fine. Mm. And, but it's still hard, like it's, yeah. um, because I do believe that the majority of the time that you create, it can be something that you really love and like to do. Mm. But sometimes there's, a, and you notice, but there's a stage yeah. in the growing a project or a company in which you need to do something which is not yeah. your and passion. I, yeah, I, I mean, as you say, that's where I think the biggest kind of spiritual, like, that's the biggest, to stay in flow or to like stay present with that, mm. that can be incredible or that can be like a, a really valuable learning, yeah. I guess. So for you at this moment, not the, not the long-term vision where you want things to go, it's just following the energy or just it's following the energy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's following the energy, I think, at this, at this moment in time. And I think once the right time will come, it, will, it, it can translate into a vision, which then translates into very practical steps. But right now it's really, uh, this feels good and so I'm going to do a bit more of this. Yeah. So, so what do you feel is um, the essence of what you 
have to bring to the world or are bringing to the world? What, what is, when you use a word like purpose, what is it? Mm. <laughs> Such a good, <laughs> nice. Um, My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a discovering I'm first of all I feel it's continuously changing like it's a it's a it's a discovering thing I think in the end it comes down to like how to love loving in the loving in the best way possible just like a discovery of like how to love in the best way possible which translates into everything like translates into your action your relationships your really practical like just what you're doing like and how how to do that with 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 a loving energy uh, and with a sense of appreciation for and love for the thing that you're creating or the person that you're beholding or um, yeah and I think more practically really bringing together people like I I I've always felt a lot of energy around bringing together people like organizing events creating communities and and so that's uh, right now how it manifests more more kind of practically uh, but yeah I think on a on a deeper sense it's just around the word love and also just learning in this life how to love in the best best possible way um, yeah beautiful mm. you I'm I'm very I'm quite curious now how you would describe that in one sentence it's impossible <laughs> And then there's the essence of what I have to bring to the world? Okay. Yeah. Well, like you said, I think it's always, it, it's changing. Like purpose is not something that is set in stone. Mm -hmm. as, as soon as you set, set it in stone, it's gone. It's, mm -hmm. it's nothing anymore. It's just mind. Um, and I feel that in the last couple of years, as soon as I thought I have it, then it's mm. three months later, it's something else or it's, it's, it's a little bit different or it's deeper or lighter. Or it, it can change in many ways. But I'm, I feel like I'm getting more clarity now that it is about finding out for myself how to truly create from the inside out to understand that process better and to be um, to do it better and I feel that I have moments in which I am spot on like there's one-on-one -on -one. this is inside out and sometimes there are moments in which I feel no this is not it so I'm, I'm still learning but I think while I'm learning um, also sharing this with the outside world mm. also my own process or like we're discussing now mm. share this share our own journey with the outside world and um, well in my case I think I'm also a connector and community builder mm. um, and I create programs of course how to bring those creators together and with those learnings that we all have start to co-create and uh, go next level on their journey so I'd, yeah, I think it, when it's the essence it's about well sharing my own journey as a well as a psychologist and an entrepreneur mm. something like that yeah that's beautiful i mean you do that extremely well and you create things like this like it's it's beautiful to see yeah uh, <laughs> right away i think of the, the the lack of time i have to well i shared this in the beginning of this year we were in the, in the retreat together and in which i shared with my one of my limiting beliefs is that I always have a lack of time. Yeah. So I've been working this with this this year to create that abundance of time. Yeah. Um, but when it comes together, it's like magic. Mm. And more and more, I, I do realize that all my, the different things I'm involved in, it's just the same thing. Yeah. And then you can so seamlessly integrate, integrate them and yeah. work with it. Yeah. And, um, it's just effortless yeah. yeah yeah and maybe time stands almost still like i feel like moments i've seen you like creating from inside out like it feels more like almost 
even timeless moments. Like, you know, it's like nothing else has to happen in that mm. moment except for that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and I start to love that also. I think when you've met, you, you spoke to me, when you would have met me 10 years ago, and um, you would have told me that I would be guiding groups or giving keynotes or whatever, I would say, holy fuck, I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I always saw myself some one on the background. And I really started to enjoy it in the last couple of years. And now when I have to do a retreat or an event and um, I feel I can fill two, two weeks with it. I think you have the same thing. Like it's such a challenge to do something in just two hours or just one day and you know right away what you cannot be doing and what the, the, the participants are missing out on mm -hmm. because there's no more time. Like it's so, um, yeah, so effortless to have create something that mm -hmm. can really have a big impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I'm enjoying that I'm sinking into that more. Mm -hmm. I'm al already looking forward to when I do my homework and start well journeying on and deepening my own unconsciousness well, the next levels of these they are so more even more magical of course yeah. like then uh, yeah it's going to be awesome it is but it's the same thing with you of course yeah it's only building on itself mm. like it feels like just a building energy yeah and it only it's going somewhere beautiful. Like, and all the time I feel like this, like, oh, I want to be surprised, like almost like I'm so surprised or enthusiastic about what's going to come next. Like, how does, how's it going to look? Cause it's going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I have no idea how, but it's going to be cool. Nice. So, so, so what you've been talking about the world before and all the, mm. all the problems that are happening. Yeah. How do you look at it right now? What do you see? What do you think is happening? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think at this moment in time I'm kind of like I'm I'm kind of like I'm dis I've distanced myself from news quite a bit. So like I wouldn't say like from a trend perspective I'm really like tuned in or something, but from just like my own experience, which I think is a often a di direct reflection of reality um i feel it's beautiful like it's like a i have a sense of there is an awakening process taking place and it's and, and it's only strengthening and i think we as humans are are learning to go beyond where we have been before in our consciousness but also in our organizational structures and in the way that we run business and society um, even if it's not called consciousness or spirituality or whatever, it's like, it's taking on the next level of organizational principles, um, which is like going to be embedded in society at a depth because there's more wisdom and more intelligence and more collective wisdom building. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel incredible. Like, I feel like it's, I feel like I, th I feel we're going to turn around global warming uh i feel we're gonna yeah you're positive about that yeah i, th I think we're gonna awake as 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 a species i think business is going to play a completely new role in the future i think uh, humans as individuals are, are going to i think a lot of cultural shifts are going to take place um which are very positive um that's how I, i'm how i am experiencing it at this moment um yeah and, and, and what would you tell to people who, well, who are following the mainstream media on a daily basis and, mm -hmm. and listen to you saying this and they say, well, but how, how wrong can you be? This is not what's happening right now. Mm. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're entitled to their, to their opinion about it. And obviously, you know, there's once again, from a non, also almost non-dual perspective, there's like very good arguments to be said on both sides like on on both sides of like we're going on an upwards trajectory or we're like going to crash and burn right um yeah and i don't know i mean i don't know exactly 
where we're going to go. But I know that the most important thing is for me to be with my own energy and to, uh, to nourish my own energy and my own being and let that have a loving or positive effect on the world in whatever way that will manifest in my, in my life. And that's the only thing I can do. Like the only thing I can take care of is my, my own thing and then see what, you know, obviously practically I can, how I can create that in the world and uh, like spread, spread love to some extent. Um, but yeah, so I, I think I've also accepted if, if we go for a global t catastrophe. Like I've also accepted the idea of global warming, like going disastrously hmm. um, or a nuclear war happening. Like it's also like, if that is going to happen, that is going to happen. I'm not going to put my energy and intention into making that happen, <laughs> but, and I'm going to put my energy and intention into like creating love and taking good care of my own energy and then, and hopefully spreading that to other people and in, inspiring them or, or creating beautiful like manifestations. But yeah, it's, it's also not in my control. Like it's, it's not in my control where the whole world goes. Um, only thing I guess uh, that is only a tiny little bit in my control is this, like what I do with this, this, this physical form I'm in and this energy that's playing in me and, mm. and what I do with that. So like, it's, it's, a. Uh, that's the only thing I can do, you know, that's me doing my best at any time and yeah. Well, we'll see how, how the re how the rest goes. What, what what do you do for pure enjoyment? So when you're not working on yourself and on the next level or your thoughts about the world, what what is just for enjoyment mm. and nothing else? Is there something in your life? Well, like I I feel I feel like. I have recently come to this feeling of everything is my spiritual work. So even like me doing something out of pure enjoyment is yeah. like my spiritual path and my spiritual work. So it's mm. all part of my work. And there's also no like business work or personal work. It's all just part of my work, yeah. but work in like a positive sense, not in like a draining sense. Um, but what I love doing is, is dancing. I love dancing. I love being with people. I love just being with people. Like I'm such, a people person. I just love being with someone in a conversation and I love just dancing. I, I would say I love playing football as well, but I haven't played football in a while, so that hasn't really happened. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I think mostly when I'm in pure enjoyment, I'm dancing or I'm talking with people. And is then the, the whole Corona thing, is that influencing your those moments can you dance currently besides dancing yeah. yourself we, we i can dance currently ecstatic dance is still continuing and still being organized and it was mm. being organized in parks for a while as well so that's yeah that's going on but yeah definitely at the start of corona when we went into more of a quarantine situation i definitely had a little like social dip that i was like oh, okay that all coincided with me like yeah, yeah, yeah. in this process of I want to go deeper into myself so because I remember having you on the phone I think you were in a, in a house in nature in the middle of nowhere yeah. just with yourself right yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I was there with my two little brothers but it was there like mostly going inwards and being with the process of myself yeah oh it's been a cool year it's so great that you say that yeah it's yeah. very it's uh, yeah I, I love the process mm. with the frustrations in it as well. Yeah, definitely. And, but I think challenges like as event organizers and leaders, I organize this, uh, 65 person event, uh, and you have to like, you have to stand. So you have to really go through something like you have to stand even stronger. You have to be even like stronger of your conviction. And also like people would go up to me being like, oh, this is so irresponsible that you're organizing this, right? And then my reaction after a while, before first I was like, oh, well, okay. Um, but after a while would be, I'm taking the greatest responsibility. 
because I'm taking the responsibility to, under these conditions, respecting the government rules, to create a space where we keep connecting and we keep innovating as humans to understand how we're going to build this world together. Mm. You know, this is not a process of running and hiding. This is a process of meeting each other and meeting what is there and being fully with it and co-creating whatever is supposed to be there next. Yeah, I love how you're saying that. And yeah. that's the biggest responsibility of people like, like us, I guess, who love bringing together people. It's the biggest responsibility because it's even tougher and you mm. have to be even more resilient yeah. because you get more critics. But it's like to build whatever world we want to be in, we need to be in connection to yeah. solve the coronavirus. So we need to be in connection to innovate whatever we want to innovate on. We need, we need, we need to stay together and we need to keep building ideas. You know, it's, it's not a complete process of retraction. Like, yeah, once in a while when I organize something and something is, someone's critical on it, I think like, okay, should I not be doing this then? Well, I'm uh. keeping to the rules, et cetera, et cetera. But it, what you're saying now, this, yeah, this is a little pat on the back for myself. I yeah, you're good. so right. This nice. is what's needed. We need more exactly. creative ways to do it. Yeah. As they, soon as we agree upon, okay, let's not meet anymore, then we're fucked. Yeah. Yeah, we need to like, and we can keep meeting, but under, right, we can, I, I, I feel respect as well for, okay, you know, we'll find, we'll find a way together with multi, multiple stakeholders and the government as well. And, and we'll keep one and a half meter distance, but let's keep putting ourselves out there. You know, like, uh, it's, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to almost be creative, to be with what, what is, uh, and to keep evolving together yeah it's great that you're doing that <laughs> likewise <laughs> earlier i talked to one of your co-founders at, at uh, breathe breathe yeah. right yeah breathe he shared with us also the, the process of the, the name giving and also mm. the i shared with me how that you played a role in it yeah um can you share a little bit about what Breathe is going to be about and what your part in it is? Mm. Yes. Mm. I think on a very, very macro scale, Breathe is about really looking at what is, what is going to be the new role of, of business. Like, what role is business currently playing? Which can be seen as a very profit maximizing place for shareholders to, to gain value and obviously a lot of different roles as well, but um, like the end goal of business um, and to seeing how, yeah, from, from almost kind of a financial, from the financial world, um, what role we can play in making business um, something for good, um, something that does good and that has a purpose and that looks at the stakeholders and society and, and, and the planet and considers all those in its very day-to-day decision-making. Something like comes down to something really practical. It comes down to humans sitting in like a meeting room and saying, we're going to make this decision considering multiple stakeholders and mm. considering what, what our company wants to bring to the world. Um, and my role in that is still also like, explorative like it's it's still in an explorative phase I, I i think a big part of it right now is kind of community and communications um and brand and things like that but uh, it's also for me it's still an explorative process um what role i'm going to play in it and yeah how, how it best fits and like how i can best be of service to the team and and to breathe and to its development so yeah it's i don't know as well can go many ways can go many ways yeah yeah it's 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 it's, it's such that it, it's such it's still emerging you know the whole the whole company is still emerging so mm -hmm. it's still like there's so much to surface still and there's so much still to be defined or created so it's it's uh what is your i'm thinking because you're exploring. I think you go through life as an explorer, mm. especially right now. This year, it's 
very explorative. What is then your basis? What what does feel like your starting point or your place where you feel at home, which gives you the, the comfort and the um, the stability to do all that that exploration? Mm. I think the basis is like a feeling of self worth. Uh, I think I've been very lucky in this lifetime to kind of have like a building, like a continuous like building momentum of, of self-worth in a way of just feeling like, hey, I am, I, in general, I am good enough. I am lovable. I am like, I'm doing, like, I'm doing things that matter or I don't like, I don't know, just this feeling of like, hey, yeah, this, this is good. So it, I think what really helps me is it just quite little doubt creeps in between the moment that I have an idea and that the idea is created. Uh, it's quite like a, it's quite like a process that just goes, oh, idea, really resonate, really good idea, create, create mm. and oh, okay, go, go, whoa, 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 nice. Um, so I think, I think just, yeah, I guess that within myself is really the home. And then, I mean, I'm incredibly lucky as well with like my family upbringing, with the incredible privilege that I come from, the like friend group that I have around me. So like my life in its most, like in its most practical human form is like very stable and it's very like insured and there's a lot of safety nets and there's a lot of like things I can trust on. So it's like I'm really standing on like pillars of greatness already mm. from which I can like go the next level, you know? And sometimes I over feel this responsibility of taking this and, and, you know, build really building on that and really taking it to the next level. Um, yeah, so what do you feel then? It has to go somewhere. Yeah, I think. Impactful or what? what um, yeah, I think this feeling of, oh my God, I have this incredible privilege. Oh my God, I have these all these opportunities. I have all these uh, connections, all these possibilities, and now it's up to me to like solve something in the world. You mm -hmm. know, to make some, to really do something in the world. I've been given all these gifts, and now it's really my responsibility to do that. And in your best moments, you might enjoy the feeling, and in the worst moments, it's a contracting feeling. Or what does it do then? For yeah, you? There, there's there's moments that it's a contracting feeling, but I haven't felt that in quite a while, to be honest. Like it 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 was quite a while. Like this, I think also with my last company, it was this bearing feeling of like, oh, okay, this needs to be successful, and I re this really need to make this something big in the world, and kind of then like forcing yourself into this idea of how something should be. Mm. Uh, and right now it feels much more like, no, it, like I, right now I really feel it's already okay. I have a stable basis. I'm allowed to rest on that as well. And then see what I from there really want to create and how I can best put my energy out into the world. So has much more stability now. You, you seem to reflect on yourself quite a lot. Like you are aware of many of your thoughts and feelings and mm. patterns. Does that happen? Is, is, is that process happening in the moment or do you have like a daily reflection moment or maybe weekly or how does it work for you? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's an like every moment thing. Um, but I, I do like a daily meditation practice and I take time for journaling and, and things like that. But it's, and it's more like a daily journaling. Yeah. A weekly, I would say. Hmm. Um, but it's, for me, the biggest method is actually communication. Like it's like, a, like dialogue with other people. Like I, I gain the most insight from my, uh, conversations with other people. Hmm. Um, and, create the most insight, the most mirror possibility to get something mirrored back to me. Um, I think the most comes from that. And that's also what I tap into so much. Like I, I have. And that's going on on a continuous basis. That's going on on a continuous basis. And it's also like, 
if I feel something inside of me that needs to be spoken, I speak about it right away. So it's really like, oh, I feel vulnerable. Oh, I feel sad. Oh, and psh, you know, I'm, I very quickly, the person that needs to be in front of me becomes in front of me and, and I speak those words and, and then the reflection process can start. Um, but it's like, now that you're saying it, it's also like, it's a right, it's always a reminder for me to not too much go into it and do it from a place of doubt. You know, there's some, there's definitely when you like, when coming out of my company, like the end of last year, December, there was definitely moments that I, I felt like, oh, I'm not doing it right. And therefore I need to reflect really hard on myself and like be critical, you know? And so there's, there like, I'm always kind of holding that awareness of, okay, mm. when is this coming from a place of doubt or a place of like, criticism or judgment rather than from a place of like opportunity and, and the potential for growth and, and potential for discovering, you know? And do you feel it's different right now in this year compared to the last few years in which you built that company? For, for example, when I look at myself, I, um, the majority of the time I'm creating something, which also means you have to work and it's not all the time the open conversations that you can have when you don't have to do anything without a result. Mm. So, um, well, a lot of my time goes into the entrepreneurial stuff that I have to do. Yeah. So there's, like, there's, there's less time for those conversations that you are referring to. Yeah. Do you experience that this year there's more time for it? Than, yeah. yeah. I've, like, I've felt like limitless time kind of feeling. That's mm. because... Uh, it's also just a really different phase. Like when I was last year, my company, I had no, t no time for anything like, and so also there was like this building up of like reflective material that I couldn't, like I never had time for. So I think over a three year process, three and a half year process, there was building up reflection material that was just like, okay, don't have time for that right now. Don't have time for that right now. It was kind of building up in the back. Uh, so yeah, I think it's very, it's also very dependent on your phase. And so, so how did I, because I cannot imagine that you did not do it at all in those three years, mm -hmm. like it's too much part of your essence. Yeah. What, what, what are the ways that do work for you when you are in the trenches of entrepreneurial life? What would you advise me to do to have more of it? Mm. Yeah, I think what I'm what I'm learning now really from Breathe as well is like doing that with your whole team. <laughs> like making it a practice within your team to just complete like continuously do that. So or well, for example, we have at at the start of every meeting we have a check-in, which is just how are you feeling? Anything withholding you from being present and what's your intention for this meeting? And this gold, like gold. I'm I, absolutely doing it in every like even if i'm meeting with a group of friends i'm now like putting in the check-in <laughs> because like how are you feeling it's just like you connecting with okay what's actually really going on is there anything withholding you from being present is like all the thoughts and all the ideas that are always running around so it's actually like a really reflective question because it's like okay what's what's holding you back from being here right now so that there's still and then once you speak it out into the room it can be there and then you can presence and you, you have a more like, mm. good conversation. And then yeah, your intention for the meeting puts some kind of energy and also makes the meeting more efficient because it's like, you want to get this out of the meeting or that person wants to get this or, yeah. but yeah, that has really helped me. That has really yeah, reminded me of like, you can just put it in there as a business practice that you do with your colleagues. Uh, and obviously you have the other things that you can do for yourself, like meditating, which I never stopped during that period. Um, yeah. But it, I mean, and there's another thing that I take from uh, Michael J. Singer, the, who's the author of Unfettered Soul. He's like super strong on like, your work is your most spiritual practice. You know, like every action, like every email, Every email that you sent can be done with a certain energy. Mm. Like, and like, it's really seeing how you can 
make whatever is your work a spiritual practice, you know? Like if it's mopping the floor or if it's like being a dentist or if it's facilitating a workshop, like how can you make it your facil like spiritual practice where you learn from that what is happening and you build awareness on what kind of energy you're putting into it and you know it's like that's so valuable for me like okay. the i really also like splitting the whole idea of like stop splitting the whole idea of like personal and professional work mm. like it just feels like i agree it's just me like i'm just living my life and right now i'm doing this and right now i'm doing that and like it's just as much my work for me to meet with friends as it is to bring together people around breathe mm. uh, or to organize a retreat or to organize an event like it comes same energy all coming from the same energy like all coming from the same willingness all coming from the same openness is really i really like how that is just doesn't like that line is just fading and it's and work doesn't feel like this tough hard thing that you need to go to and you need to do no it's like work is just another flow of your life it's not even work it's just you doing what needs to get done to create yeah. what you what you thought to do together with some people yeah i recognize that i, I do see in my own life that um i don't have any normal friends anymore or mm. hardly like friends you just see because they are then friends it's always part of the whole creational process and maybe i've taken it too far i'm not sure mm. but like everyone that i'm is a friend is also someone that i co-create with or i am being coached or the other way around or um yeah how nice is that i i i feel like you can never take that too far that's just no? like okay yeah i feel i feel like that's such a it's friendships are places where you gain something and that person gains something and you have a beautiful interaction and something is created anyway you know mm. in the relationship yeah that's so true so it's just you might as well make everything some kind of beautiful creationary process and you know all friends are are just coaches as well i feel and it's so nice that, that, that to fully embrace that and then it can it can really start building like you sounds like you have really as well that whole community around you of people that are just building with you you know it's, it's really nice how, how do you in, inspire yourself next to how life inspires you or the people around you like you apparently you read like the unpaired soul yeah do you read a lot or what what is your mm. what is input for you yeah yeah i i read quite a bit now um I, I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of books as well. So as I was driving over here, I was listening listening to a book, which was the Untitled Soul, which I'm listening to for the second time um, because it's such a great book. Um, buy this book no. Um, but um, I think for me, still the main the main thing is like communication. Like that's the main thing I get inspired by. Other people like sitting here with you inspires me like my energy has already grown like has doubled in the time that i've sit here sat here and i feel more inspired and light and like i feel now also like kind of this momentum of like i want to like move you know like i want to move into the world or like kind of create or do things mm -hmm. so yeah it, it's still people i don't know so often for me it comes back to people as as kind of the reflectionary process or the inspirationary process yeah is it for you something very specific mm. yeah i think first and foremost is life and, and mm. what's happening there and conversations i do i don't read a lot like i think i have two books that i've been reading in the last three or four years <laughs> <laughs> which two are those the one I don't even know the name, and about, it's a very small booklet. And once in a while, like last weekend, I was going through it. And the other one is um, uh, "I Am Dead" T H A T by. Uh, What's well, not written by Nisargata Maharaj, but but <clears throat> someone else wrote down all the things that he kept saying. 
and that's like it has endless depth. I can. Oh, nice. Um, so once in a while I read a chapter, and then two years later you read the same chapter again, and it feels like I, I have not read this before. You you read totally different things in it. So that's when it comes to books, and I. Well, sometimes I just listen to a podcast or uh, uh, a YouTube movie, which uh, mm. has something nice to say. But it's it's not a lot. Maybe also there, it's when I would have cre- when I create more time for myself. Mm. It could have been more, or maybe I could read more. But I don't feel you must I'm, take all your inspiration from somewhere. Where, like, what what is the source now? If if you have less time for that. Well, I can feel inspired by, well, I have two, um, um, two mentors. I think you've met them or maybe one of them, like it's Laurens and Nanda. Yeah. Um, and they, they coach me and <clears throat> I think the inspiration there is then once in a while the, a line is being dropped when I have a session, which doesn't do anything at that point in time. But then four months later, mm. I realized the truth in there and it has been opening up mm. and something within myself. So mm. it's more like a seed or inception and that's then the inspiration which, but then I needed space before um, something could come through. So then the, the inspiration is just the connection that I, that I have which shines light on something. Um, I'm thinking what else is there because I think you're right you also have you need other inspiration as well mm. probably just random things that I read or yeah pass just by life and then it's like you saying then work is a spiritual practice and every moment is a moment of inspiration and yeah and spiritual practice yeah Yeah, but it would be nice to, well, I create those moments like every, we did this last weekend, I think I shared it with you, like with my girlfriend to create some more structure in, okay, when do we have time for being together or with the family or for, for ourselves? And now it's pretty random, but I love to be in, in nature for multiple days by myself, doing a hike in the mountains. I think that that is my biggest inspiration. Then it's then uh, it's in a way so easy. Uh, yeah. I was in Switzerland last summer, and then, uh, well, with my girlfriend and my uh, one and a half year old, we were in the mountains on the camping. And then, uh, well, my girlfriend she was allowed to be gone for a few days, and then I stayed with uh, my son, and the other way around. Wow. But as soon as I'm two or three days out there, well, everything starts to talk to you. Like the, the mountains and the gletsches and the rivers had a whole story for me and, and uh, about myself and my own creation. But of course you need to, well, of course, I need a little time to sink into it. Like mm-hmm. I need a few hours at least to truly sink into that process. Well, I found out <clears throat> I had this, I think, half a year, half a year ago. It was the beginning of, of COVID, and um, I did my morning meditation. And, and once as well was like, I, I'd like to go skateboarding. And I never did skateboarding in my whole life, so I searched on the internet and uh, I found that there also exist longboards. And I never knew what this, those were, but I was really excited about it. Like I could yeah. think of nothing else. I needed longboards. And well, within a few days it arrived <laughs> <laughs> and I fooled around on it and it was actually quite easy. And then um, every weekend on a Saturday, I started longboarding in, in the forestry area around here, doing some meditation and some hiking and just the longboarding, which is actually really centric because mm-hmm. you have to stay present to not fall off, especially when you're making speed. But I think those those are the mo- most joyful yeah. hours or days in which I don't have to do anything, just like with my longboard or with a combination of walking and meditating, and then it happens. Yeah. Then, 
or when I'm drinking my tea on the on the terrace yeah. after the hike, just being, and then it it happens. That's mm. that's I think where my biggest inspiration is. Mm. I'd love to learn more from that as well. Like I, I think you inspire me as well to be more on my own. Like with me, it's so people bound, you know, that I feel that there's even more inspiration to be gained from like just going into nature by myself. Like that sounds like so daunting to me, but that's exactly why mm. their potential is a lot of energy there, you know? Yeah. I think that's an interesting difference that you are more people focused than, and I'm more mm. on that alone, alone part. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Hmm. This was nice. This was very nice. <laughs> Let's do it again another time. Yeah, that's us. Let's see where we are. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Awake. Oh,